Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, welcome back to another episode of The Dean Show. We're here every week, same time, same channel. You can visit thedeanshow.com to see our show times, or you can view us as people do from all around the globe at thedeanshow.com. Today, we're going to be letting you get involved in this show. You've seen it last time. It's back again. Dunya, dunya. We're going to let you get involved, your family. We're going to read out some of the different questions, and we're going to let our next guest, when we come back, let us know, is this dunya dunya? Does it qualify under that? And the non-Muslims, we want you to get involved too. So if you see a Muslim doing something that's not according to Islam, you can nicely smile at him and say, dunya dunya. And this maybe will help him get his act together so then we can all live in peace. Because if we're doing things the way our Creator wants us to do it, that's how we're going to have peace. When we come, when we come back, Siraj Wahaj helping us tackle Dunya Dunya. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. Dunya Dunya. 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 Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Eddie. Peace be unto you. Peace be upon you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks be to Allah. How are you doing? Thank you very much. People have, they can see you have your own section at the Dean Show. So they can go there, see some of the shows that we've done in the past. And we're really thankful that you, out of your busy schedule, you find a time to, to be with us no, here. I'm, I want to thank you, Eddie. And I'm not, not only on behalf of myself, but on behalf of all of your guests. Um, you know, we have an opportunity. People have an opportunity. Even myself, I watch your show. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I have an opportunity to go and see some of your guests that you've had. And it is very educational, very informative, and, uh, and also entertaining. Halal entertainment. Halal entertainment. Yes. And that's what we try to do. We try to give the non-Muslims a better picture about Islam, to live, eradicate some of the false fears and clear up some of the misconceptions, and also to help educate the Muslims with people who are qualified to talk about this beautiful way of life. Yes, it is. Islam, the way yes. of life of all the messages of God. Absolutely. Now, just a little bit about yourself. You were actually the first Muslim to open up in Congress, is that true? The will be offered by our guest chaplain, Imam Siraj Wahaj, member of the American Muslim Council, Washington, D.C. Siraj Wahaj of Brooklyn, New York. He is the first Muslim leader to work in cooperation with the New York City Police Department, and he is nationally known for his leadership in establishing a drug-free zone in the drug-laden neighborhood, his neighborhood of Bedford-Stuyvesant in New York. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, Praise belong to thee alone, O God, Lord and Church of all the worlds. Praise belong to thee, who shaped us and colored us in the wombs of our mothers, colored us black and white, brown, red and yellow. Praise belong to thee, who created us from males and females and made us into nations and tribes, that we may know one another. Most gracious, most merciful, all-knowing, all-wise, just God, Master of the Day of Judgment, Thee alone do we worship, and from Thee alone do we seek help. Guide the leaders of this nation, who have been given a great responsibility in worldly affairs. Guide them, and grant them righteousness and wisdom. Guide them and us on the straight path, the path of those whom Thou hast bestowed Thy favors, the path of Your inspired servants, the path of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, guide them and us, not on the path of the disobedient ones. Yes. Talk um, about this for a second. It, it is interesting that mo most people don't realize that uh, Congress never opens up a session without an invocation mm -hmm. from some clergy. Usually it's done by some Jewish rabbi or Christian minister. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in the history of the United States of America, an imam, a, a Muslim leader actually did an invocation, opened up the session of Congress. I think it was 1993, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. I think we're seeing that now. I think they're seeing this right now. This is you. Is that right? That's yeah. me. All That's right. me. I was a little bit younger then. Uh -huh. you know. Still looking good, my brother. Still <laughs> looking good. Alhamdulillah. So I think that's, that's important. I think yeah. what happened, I found out that 
uh, that day and the next day in Saudi Arabia, almost every five minutes that played mm -hmm. because it was important. It was important for the Muslims around the world, one billion, five hundred million Muslims, for them to see that Muslims in America are part of America. We're, 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 we're American citizens mm -hmm. and we're part of this nation. And so to acknowledge that presence, to have a Muslim imam open up a session of Congress was huge. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how big it was. It was so big that everybody wasn't for it. Um, um, I, I, I forgot his name on um, Pat um, 700 Club. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he was angry that a Muslim opened up a session of con Congress. He, He's said, got, uh, he, says, uh. he says, what next you'll have witches doing it. Mm -hmm. So he was he was very upset. It's pretty childish. Very I, childish. Very yeah. childish. You know, as if that as if the Muslims are not legitimate yeah. religious people. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about again, um, fourteen hundred years old. The old uh, fourteen hundred years ago, the Quran yeah. was revealed, and you're talking about all of these followers all over yeah. the world, and for him to get upset that a Muslim yeah. opened a processional congress. Yeah. Surprising. This is not how you work towards peace. I mean, this man that you mentioned, I hope we, we pray that God Almighty guides him. Yes. Because if we have people working towards, you know, harmony and peace, we, we won't talk about I it. I think something. that people like you mm -hmm. who've done the job of explaining Islam, mm -hmm. bringing Muslim personalities and um, scholars to talk about Islam, and let the people see and, 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 and have conversations. We ought to have uh, dialogue and discussions, mm -hmm. so people have misconceptions about Islam, mm -hmm. um, then then it need to be clarified. Yeah, he needs to watch the Dean show. Yeah, and then maybe we we'll get a copy of the tape and we we'll send it. We to him. we could talk with them. You know, yes. dialogue. We have nothing to hide. I think Pat Robinson is his name, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Yes. So uh, you have you, nothing to hide, of course. Exactly. Tell us now. Also, before we go into Dunya Dunya, you've also gotten a lot of rewards from the community, you've done some great community work. You helped clean up some of the drug-infested areas, crime. Now one of the was, areas, yeah. one of the areas um, where I'm the Imam, Masjid al Taqwa. Yeah. And we first opened up that Masjid in 1978, mm -hmm. according to the um, the uh, captain of the 79th precinct, mm -hmm. which is the area of the police. Captain, like the main police the main chief. Man. Yeah, he said that it was it was one of the worst in the city. But after, alhamdulillah, the Muslims, we had our anti-drug patrol. In about 1988, Allah blessed us to close down 15 crack houses on the block of the masjid. Dope, wow. Dope, dope houses, crack houses, um, and, and ran the drug dealers and the drugs out of our community. And if you look at the area now, you compare it to 1978 to now, it was an area of blight, abandoned buildings. You know, when, you, when we went there in 1978, there was not one Muslim business. You go there now, you know, buildings, uh, no abandoned buildings, no crack houses, and over 50 Muslim businesses in that area of the masjid alone. And non-Muslims can come into your mosque oh, and talk to you and, and get they, to know and, about and, the and Muslims? And they do, and they yeah. do. Not only uh, people in the area, we have um, uh, law enforcement, we yeah. have political people, we have religious people yeah. coming into the masjid and having uh, dialogue and conversation with, with the Muslims. And that's how we get to know each other. That's how we get to so know each other. So we can love. live in peace. That, love and peace. We, we all want the same thing. Yeah. We all want peace. When we come back, get ready for Dunya Dunya here on The Dean Show. Dunya Dunya Dunya. So if you find yourself, your Iman is going down, check yourself. There is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. You got some CD or some music in the car, bobbing your head to 50 cents or... No, it's common sense. Don't do things that can hurt people. Lady Gaga, Goo Goo and all that other nonsense? Bullying is haram, backbiting, slandering, and such substances as smoking. Stay tuned, 18 inch biceps! We'll see what happens to Eddie on the Dean Show. And we holding it down on the Dean Show early. Make sure y'all tune in. When it comes to you, the truth, and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. You got problems here. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the gospel. Despite all of the other issues about the gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped. 
God. One who protects us from hunger. Back here with Imam Siraj on the Dean Show, Dunya Dunya, and I'll get ready. And if you see that now, you can take this to your local Imam, to your scholar, and ask them, say, does this really qualify for Dunya Dunya? And then you'll actually define what do we mean. Before we do, what do we mean when we say Dunya? What does this mean? You see, that's really that's a great question. Yeah. When, when you talk about Dunya, everything in this life, is, is dunya, yeah. right? The food we eat is dunya, mm -hmm. clothing we wear, uh, television programs, even your television program, it's dunya. Dunya. I mean, it's dunya. I mean, you know, it's not the hereafter, it's yeah. this life here. And everything in the dunya is not bad. Yeah. But sometimes it has a negative connotation. Mm. And when we say, oh, that's the dunya, that's, it's, it's implying that that's something that's not good, that you don't take in, uh, you don't take in consideration um, the afterlife. You, you know, you, you want to do things that's going to be beneficial mm -hmm. in this life as well as the hereafter. So sometimes Muslims say, you know, oh, that's the dunya. That's what they do in the dunya. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a negative connotation. Yeah. So we want to balance it out. So we have to be in this world. You have to be in the like world. Like the Prophet, peace be upon us, said, be like a traveler, huh? There you go. Yeah. Now tell us, when Friday Juma rolls around, the brother rather be downtown. Dunya, dunya, dunya. Talk about this now. Dunya, dunya. He weighs. Say it deep, again. Wait, wait. Knee deep in dunya. Dunya, dunya, dunya. Now elaborate on this. The importance of Juma and why this qualifies for dunya, dunya. Can you gotta realize that the Lord of the Worlds is telling us something? Mm -hmm. You can go do what you want to do, but Friday at a certain time is time for us to go to the masjid. For congregation of prayer. That's the house of That's the house of worship. God. The, the house, house of worship. Of God. It's called Beit Allah, the house mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. It's you know, if we were Christians, it would be the church. If we were Jews, it would be the synagogue. Yeah. But it's the masjid, it's mm -hmm. the mosque, it's the place where Muslims go to pray to God. And 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 we required on Fridays at a certain time to congregate ourselves together and go to the masjid. And those who would not go to the masjid to go do something else, whatever they're doing is dunya unless it has something to do with their health, mm -hmm. the hospital, uh, so forth and so on. But we're told that when, when that day comes, we should leave off all trade and business and hasten to the remembrance of Allah the Almighty. After all, after all, He created us and gave us even the dunya that we have, the dunya car that we have, mm -hmm. the dunya clothing that we have, everything He gave us, the, bra the brains that we have, the body that we have, the jobs that we have. And, and he's saying, okay, for about one hour a week, mm -hmm. stop all of that yeah. and come and remember me. That's not too hard for the one that's, that's giving you everything, easy. everything that's very easy. you if have you in his life. Stop. You can't stop for a moment to go to the masjid to worship the God who gives you the air that you, that you, that you breathe, the yeah. water that you drink, the beautiful wife that you have and the children that you have, the parents that you have, you mean to tell me you can't spend some time glorifying him? Mm -hmm. You probably heard it all. I mean, you are the, as they say, the OG, the, the, o, the OI, the original Imam. So tell us some of, the, some of the excuses that, you know, you're sitting there and you hear it and you're just like, you know, in your head, you're just like, man, talk to us, give, share some examples, some stories about some excuses. And then maybe the, the, after some good, you know, advice, you know, talking to these people that maybe they turned around or what happened? You know, you have every excuse, you, yeah. know, you know, from, well, I got to make my money. Money, the dollar. A good old dollar. Mm -hmm. I got to make money. And I'm saying that, that God knows that you need to make money and he'll test you. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, you know, Muslim businesses uh, who, who, who make a sacrifice. Yeah. And maybe that one hour, perhaps uh, they, they lost some sales. But in the end, you really win by Allah, and you get more from Allah mm -hmm. because you are in obedience with Him. Yeah. Um, so you may lose money, and you may not. Yeah. There are some people who actually make more money, so because God knows best. Um, so um, they want to spend time with their girlfriends, mm. which there's no such thing as girlfriends in Islam. No. You know, so they want to do anything. They want to go to the movies. They want yeah. to go. I've, I've, I've heard every kind of excuse, but really, simply, there's no excuse in the worship of God, the Almighty. And again, you can, you know, some of the things you want to do, you can do them, but after mm -hmm. 
And Allah says, and after, and after the prayer, then go, you go back. You go back to your business, go back to your doing your business, go back yeah. to making money. You can do it. But there, there should be a time that you shouldn't. Same thing with the Jews. Yeah. Jews were given a commandment about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That on that day, they had to stop. They couldn't work. Yeah. You know, so it's not something that's just unique to the Muslims, but all of religious people. Uh, many, many Christians, they, they close down their businesses on Sunday. Yeah. So they go to the church on Sunday. Jews mm -hmm. go to the synagogue on Saturday. Muslims go to the masjid on Friday. Mm -hmm. And all of them in the process of doing what? Remember, remembering their, their, their creator. And then you got people don't want to do it. Okay, fine. Do what you want to do. He's not going to make you do it. Yeah. There's no compulsion in religion, but there's a price that you're going to have to pay. You'll die. You're going to die. Uh -huh. And he may even give you a long life. Yeah. That's not even the issue. But in the, in the, in the end, you know, you're going to be held account you're going to, we're going to be held accountable for what we did and what we didn't do. He asked us to do a simple thing. And again, by the way, when you go to Juma prayer and the congregational prayer on Friday... Who benefits? You can't, you can't benefit God. That's the thing that people have to understand. You can't benefit him. If, if nobody in creation worships him, it doesn't take anything away from his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And if everybody in the universe worship God together all day long, it does not add to him. It doesn't add to his power or anything like that. He doesn't need us. We need him. Mm -hmm. And so when we, uh, every, every, every week on a Friday, and we give him one hour, and we remember him, it's good for us. It's good to get out of the dunya yeah. for a while. You know, the, the rat, race, rat race, to get to get involved in, in remembrance of him. And then you be shocked. You go to the masjid, you listen to the sermon, the imam gives a, a khutbah or a sermon, and he says something that will change your life, even help you in your dunya. It'll help you in your business. It'll help you in your business. Yeah. That's the point. And, you know, you, you get uh, uh, so much edger and so much reward from Allah the Almighty for doing what he commands us to do. Your life is more blessed. More, more, much more blessed. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to be right back with another question and let you decide, dunya, dunya or not. We'll be right back on the Dean Show. Dunya, dunya, dunya. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done, but it requires another step, and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? Back here on the Dean Show with Imam Siraj Wahaj on this episode, Dunya Dunya. Let's read off the next one and then we'll see if this qualifies for Dunya Dunya. Now, you be ready too and everybody collaborate and if it's something you have some doubts, take it to your local Imam, <laughs> take it to your scholar and see if he'll agree with us too. And that the main thing is that we're sincere and then we want to change for the better. Doing things how the Creator wants us to do it, then nothing less than paradise. Is that right? Absolutely. All right. When the Muslim convenience store owner has been advised and talked to many times about selling alcohol, lotto tickets in the inner cities, and all he has to say in response is, this is America, brother. This is America. What do we have to say? Dunya, 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 big dunya. That's with a big G. Capital dunya, <laughs> capital dunya. Let, let me say this, uh -huh. Eddie. I think it's important that the the, the beautiful thing about our, uh -huh. our religion, uh, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him once said, "Inna al halala bayunun, wa inna al harama bayunun, wa bainahuma umuru mustabihatun la yalamuna kathiru min al nas." That which is permissible is is plain. 
It's clear. Clear. That which is not permissible is clear. Mm -hmm. But in between mm -hmm. them are doubtful matters. Not mm -hmm. many people know about them. Yeah. Right? So, so there, there are some issues that are very, very clear. This issue here, selling alcohol, I don't care where you are. It's not permitted. It's haram. There's no ambiguity. There's no it's ambiguity. Clear. It's not like, well, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, really, it could. No, no. It is absolutely prohibited. Now, now, I, I know for a fact that the, the people who sell alcohol, lotto tickets and, and all those other things. But ga lotto tickets. Lotto what about that? Is that clear? Is that, that's under gambling? It's under gambling. Yeah. It's clear. Again, it's not, there's no ambiguity there. And don't these things destroy people's lives? It does. Yeah. Of course it destroys life. You know, you have uh, a basketball player recently yeah. for, the, for the Washington Wizards. Mm -hmm. um, I think his name is Arenas. Um, got in trouble. Mm -hmm. He lost, you know, I've, you know, he has a contract worth over $100,000. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he was gambling with another person on, it, on, his, on, his, on, his, on, his, on the team and somebody didn't pay the debt, mm. right? They were gambling, yeah. and the Quran talks about it brings enmity, alcohol and gambling. Yeah. What he do? Take out a gun. Wow. Uh, they, they pull guns on each other. Uh -huh. huh? They pull guns on each other. Wow. And now he's suspended from the, from the NBA because they heard about it, uh -huh. right? So you have gambling is a serious addiction. You have, you have one of the great uh, baseball players, Pete Rose, yeah. who, uh, you know, He's a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. a baseball player, one yeah. of the best, best ever, but he can't get into the Hall of Fame because he used to gamble, and he used to gamble in baseball. Yes. That's a no-no. You have people that have lost millions of dollars mm -hmm. gambling. Uh, one of the great basketball players, uh, Michael Jordan, had a game gambling problem. Charles Barkley, great basketball player, has, an, has a gambling addiction, admitted mm -hmm. gambling addiction. Yeah. So these things are clear. Now, you're Muslim. Now, you are supposed to be a good example for the people in America, yeah. the people in Chicago, the people in New York, the people in Philadelphia. You're supposed to be a good example. Now, here, you're making money. You're making money off the people. Mm -hmm. But the people don't even know that you're not supposed to be selling those things. You're not supposed to be selling alcohol. Alcohol is has been implicated in, I think, one-third of the uh, accidents that had fatal accidents in this country attributed to alcohol. Uh, um, one third of the people who commit suicide attributed, attributed to alcohol. You talk about murder and you know, alcohol. So how can you, a Muslim, say that you want the good for the people? You're there making a lot of money off of the people, but God told you, don't, don't eat the prophet said you can't, God don't allow you to sell the alcohol. Not only don't drink it, but don't sell it. So, mm -hmm. so, no, it is dunya of the worst kind. Yeah. And I'm saying to any Muslim, if you want to be a successful businessman, then do what God tells you to do. Mm -hmm. I, I know some Muslims, I'm very proud of them. I used to go talk to them. They sold alcohol. I, I remember once going into a Muslim store. It was a Sunday, right? Yeah. And I got excited. I, I saw a sign, and it says that um, no alcohol sold here. Nice. Huh? Uh huh? On Sunday. <laughs> oh. After three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Wait. Huh? So the so, rest of the time it's there. See, I didn't, see I, when I first saw no alcohol sold here, I got excited. It's excited. But something. Some stipulation now that. Then I looked and I said, uh oh. <laughs> uh, 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 on, on Sundays. Uh huh. So, but, but a Muslim is like, okay, let's, listen, Mr. Mr. Jones comes into the store and I, I, want, some, I want some beer. Well, well, Mr. Jones, I don't have beer. Well, let me go somewhere else. Well, before you go, let me tell you something. Yeah. You asked me why I'm not selling the, the yeah. beer. Because I know the beer is not good for you. Good Dow opportunity. A wonderful opportunity. Yeah. And I know it's not good for you. Yeah. I'm not going to sell it for you, even though I don't make your money from you, but I'm not going to sell it to yeah. you because I don't want it to hurt you. Uh -huh. That's what you. That's what we yeah. ought to be about. Inviting the good. And forbid helping, the, the, helping the people to stay away from those evil things. Exactly. That destroy your lives anyway. Absolutely. We'll be right back with more Dunya Dunya. You be the judge. You decide here on The Dean Show. Dunya Dunya. 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 He is the maintainer.
If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to believe in and love Jesus Christ. Why is it then when it comes to one of the most important decisions in life, we literally abuse ourselves? It's not that the main thing we're looking for is to see what type of money he has so that he can treat my daughter like a princess. It's not about that. He is the one who protects us from hunger. Back on the Dean show, so tell us, Imam, could our non-Muslims brothers in humanity, because there are brothers in humanity, is this right? Absolutely. We want them to be our brothers I, in faith. I want, so you to be, I want you to be clear about that, because yeah. the Quran says in many places, Ya Yuhannas, oh mankind. Mm -hmm. So God is talking to all of us. Yeah. So tell us, our brothers in humanity, the non-Muslims, after they see now, they know dunya, dunya, and they walk up into this convenience store, and they see the big Kaaba, and they see all the alcohol, and they say, okay, that must be a Muslim. Can they tell them, the non-Muslim, to the Muslim, now that they know that they shouldn't be selling alcohol? I tickets, want Could them, they tell them dunya, dunya? I, I want them to say I want them to tell them. I want uh, them to say dunya, dunya. Yeah. I want them to remind them. I want them to embarrass them. Uh -huh. And sometimes you'd be surprised, Eddie, that if a non-Muslim... It says to a Muslim, you know what? Bad enough that I'm not a, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a, I, don't, I don't practice Islam. But you should know better. You're a Muslim. You're supposed to be an example. You study the Quran. You believe in Prophet Muhammad. And, 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 and people, I want them to do that. I want yeah. them to call us to an account. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, by the way, sometimes they'll do that. Yeah. You're supposed to be a Muslim. <laughs> you, you've heard that before. Right? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. I love it. Uh -huh. That's yes, amazing. we need to call them to account. I, I you know, I one one of the plans that I had from New York City uh -huh. I, was my objective to get every Muslim store in New York City to stop selling alcohol. Yeah, and I'm gonna do it one day by God's permission. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, I'm gonna try uh, to get rid of the, the 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 girly magazines. Yeah, you know what I mean by girly yeah. magazines. The porno the and porno, all this stuff. Yeah, pornography. Get rid of the alcohol, get rid of the gambling, yeah. and all of that. And and I think that if we would do that, we would send a strong message to the people of America that you know what those Muslims are—they're serious and they're for real. Otherwise, you know you know what they're gonna say? Huh. You're just like everybody else, man. Yeah. And 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 you're worse. You know why yeah. you're worse? Because you're a hypocrite. Because mm -hmm. at least at least they'll say we this is what we do. Mm -hmm. But you 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 you're going against your own teachings. Yeah. So hopefully those Muslims who are doing that. Now you can use this episode in, in along with your calling them, advising them in the nicest ways to stop this. Hopefully something, Allah do the rest and they'll stop and those liquor stores or those places will turn into maybe some bread stores or some other candy I got stores. An, I, I, or, got yeah. <laughs> I got an idea. I got an idea. How about those people who watch the show make a copy of this tape and yeah. give it to those Muslims. That's a great idea. You know, no stories. Make a copy, give you know it to the, Say, listen to, this. to the Muslims who are selling alcohol and the non-Muslims can also help out and participate there and tell go. them dunya dunya. Last one. Yes. Now, the person that's always concerned about smelling good and looking nice, does this uh, qualify under dunya dunya? No, 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 no. Like sweet smelling. The Prophet loved those who smell sweet. So this sweet. is good, huh? That's a good thing. It's that's good, a good to thing. smell good. But you got to all just be a little bit careful okay. about the women. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened once. I Talk was on, on a plane, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and I was walking down the aisle, and all of a sudden, my head turned. It's as if someone pulled my head, and I turned, and I found myself looking in the direction of a Did woman. you have a whiplash after that? Almost. <laughs> just, 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 just about. But in, and you know what did it? Uh -huh. It was a smell. Yeah. It was so attractive that I was just like, I, I followed it, and uh -huh. I think the person knew that. Yeah. So women, the, the Muslim women, and the women have to be a little bit careful. Yeah. They don't want to make the scent too strong. Yeah. It should be very, you know, uh, you know, very mild. Yeah. As opposed to being strong and grab the attention so that some man can start looking at her. Yeah. So th this attention should be sought after her husband. It should definitely be sought after her husband. Yeah. So she can, I mean, uh, put whatever she wants to wear because there now the dress code and everything is again how the creator yeah. has put it down but what about the the man now also how is he he can be nice and uh, not wrinkled and have a nice you know attire on where he's of, it's a part of islam so, you know you yeah. don't have to look like a bum 
Okay, this so is don't, don't mean you pious because you look like nice a Nice clothes is good. Nice clothes is fine. Yeah. You know, according to a person's ability, mm -hmm. a person can afford it, but yeah. we should avoid for men silk, for instance. Yeah. Or gold. Yeah. But but other than that, we should have nice clothing yeah. and, and neat and clean. Yeah. Now, we're gonna bring it all home. It goes back to acknowledging that there is one who gave you life, who give you death. Yes. Talk about this because these things he wants us to be in paradise. He wants what's best for us. So if we look at it from a different perspective, not just a bunch of rules, right. I think it'll make more sense. Please talk uh, that's about That's the point that I'm trying to drive home, Eddie, is that, that God wants for us good. Yeah. And, and the thing, we can't, you know, as much as we love this world, I mean, we try to stay as long as we can. People, yeah. people might, a few people try to kill themselves. Yeah. But most people, they want to live, right? Yeah. And when, when it's close to death, they say, oh, God, don't let me die. Um, but he's got something better than this world. Yeah. As good as it, it is to us, there's something better. For instance, I mentioned earlier in another segment, every soul shall taste of death, not in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. In paradise, there's no death. Yeah. You know, there's no sickness. You don't even have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And guess what? You don't even go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. In a world of peace and tranquility, no wars, no fighting, no, none of that stuff, but nothing but peace, and anything that you want, yeah. now you can have it yeah. in, the, in the paradise. Yeah. And God wants us to have that. But the price we have to pay is give up the dunya. Give up the dunya, give dunya. Up the dunya, dunya. Thank you very much. Thank you. We started with peace. We end with peace. Thank you. May God Almighty Allah reward you. Thank you. We need to have you back again when you it's are done. in town. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Everybody's heard. All the everybody, thousands everybody, of people. I'm saying it in front of all these people. Confirmed. Back again next time with us, Imam Siraj Rahaj. Look out for that. You can visit him at thedeanshow.com. He has his own section. Thank you for being with us on The Dean Show. We want peace. The owner of peace is the one who created us, and we need to live life according to how he wants us to live. And then there's nothing less than paradise, as the Imam had talked about at the end. We hope that you come back here every week on The Dean Show so we can all benefit from this beautiful knowledge that most of these guests who come on, they share with us. We'll see you next time on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. The DVDs for Dawah, as Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Naho 16.125, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom, beautiful preaching, and reason with them in ways that are best. And this is a great opportunity for you to take up the obligation, take up the call, as Allah has told you to do, and share this beautiful message with the world. Islam, submission to the one God. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is, you do your best. Give up worshiping God is one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to... It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see. Oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave. You're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away. Oh Allah, guide me.